Hi everyone. I hope you guys are having a great day. Let's talk about homeowners that bought a property in the last year or two. If you bought a property in 2021 or 2022, looking at the current prices of homes in 2023 or leading into maybe 2024, you would probably be very, very disappointed to put it lightly. Um, prices of homes in the past year or two were were greater so reality is you probably didn't anticipate that dip in home values rightly so we've seen prices of homes go up consistently in the last few years we'll take a look at some of the numbers there but given where we are average prices has, has significantly dropped and we'll look at reasons why you will see that in let's say start with Mississauga. In Mississauga from 2019 to 2020, we saw an increase from 2020 to 2021, an even more increase, and certainly from 2021 to 2022, the average price has also increased. So in 2022, the average price of a home, that's all of it, that's townhomes and semis and detaches and including condos as well is around 1.12 million. Now, 2023 as forecasted is a little bit under that, right? It's around 1.06. We'll see some numbers at the end of the year, but for now, really it's a it's a downturn from from 2022. If you look at 2021, it might not be so bad, actually. There are certain properties that might still be uh, higher, and that's for the Mississauga real estate numbers. If we look at Toronto, uh, Toronto, we can take a look at since 1997. In 1997, an average price of a home is around 64500 Well, that's a long, long time ago unless you invented a time machine we don't have access to to that kind of property anymore in the gta certainly toronto um it took around so sixty four thousand five hundred. so it took a little while before it doubled right so um the doubling of that is around a hundred and let's say 120 hundred and thirty thousand dollars and that occurred in around 1986 so around nine years afterwards that's when we saw price double. Now, from 1986, where the price of a home is just under $140,000, it nearly doubled in 1989, right? So the double is $280,000, but didn't quite hit it there. But if you look at 1989 into early 1990s, when we got when we experienced a recession early 1990s, the recovery is, you know, long and drawn out. Now, that's usually what happens in a recession. Normally, a recession is around 11 months, 18 months worth. The, the Great Recession in the U.S., when we had uh, experienced a financial crisis or what they experienced, the, uh, a more significant financial crisis, it was around 18 months. That's why they call it the Great Recession over there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if we were looking at um, 1986 numbers, so 100 and just under 140,000, it's around what 2002, 2003 before I hit that 280,000 before I start doubling. Now, you saw a slow increase from you know, from historically, from 1977 to 2003 2004 but shortly after that you see this curve this price curve has significantly basically moved up so from that perspective if we looked at $240,000 um $280,000 around 2002 2003 the doubling um uh of that is is let's say let's look at let's say around six hundred thousand. When do we hit six hundred thousand? We hit six hundred thousand in around two thousand and fourteen and two thousand and fifteen. And then the doubling of that, um, let's say six hundred thousand is clearly, clearly in around 
this mark of 2022. There's a significant increase, obviously, the impact that we've seen in 2020 because of the pandemic, the housing demand skyrocketed. And you can see that even though there's such a big increase um, in terms of uh, rate of increase here, it actually, the rate of increase so uh, is so much more uh, after 2020, okay? Until we saw 2023 when we can see potentially a dip in average prices. Now, there's several factors that um, we can take a look at for reasons of why we are seeing a dip right now. The, pandem the pandemic obviously changed our need for housing. It was basically the only place that we saw, we were told, that we would be safe to basically properly social distance. We were told to stay home. We worked from home. We, our kids studied at home, we cooked at home, and we did not go anywhere. We didn't go on, you know, vacations like we used to. This obviously led to a higher demand for housing in 2020 and 2021, and predominantly part of 2022. That caused, you know, a, a higher global inflation. So inflation is the higher prices, uh, general prices of everything, including a home. Now, when we saw that, our Canadian government obviously made it a priority to take control of this high inflation. And what's happened is, you know, one way to control it is through mortgage rates. And mortgage rate increases since March 2020 were significant, right? It was consistently every single meeting there were increases anywhere from 25 to 50 basis points. And in time we saw a net 4.75% increase. Now, even though we're seeing that our high interest rates have cooled down, uh, the demand for housing and other investments, there's also the stricter rules that, uh, that we saw back in 2018 when the government introduced the B20 mortgage rules or guidelines that basically made the lenders qualify each mortgage borrower at a higher interest rate than the actual interest rate that they're um, contracting with. Now, obviously, that did us well because of the rate increases. So that actually helped a little bit to some because if you had to qualify at a higher interest rate before and the rate did actually increase, you should have as a home buyer or somebody with a mortgage should be able to sustain some rate increases. Now, are we talking about 4.75% increase? Maybe not, but certainly that obviously was, was uh, um, used to control the inflation. Now, what are the impact to these recent buyers, the 2021, 2022 buyers? Obviously, the dip was concerning, right? Like it's, if you bought for you know, $1.2 million property in the GTA, and now somebody's telling you it's only worth 1.1, it's not a good, you know, it's not a good feeling to see that. Now, obviously, those short-term fluctuations are technically part of the deal, right? Even though we haven't seen, if you look at these numbers, we haven't seen a whole lot of dip in, in mortgage prices, um, and this is basically a trap Toronto real estate board, uh, price increases and decrease. There were some price decreases in around early 1990s. And these are all percentage of increases. Certainly, we've seen double digit increases in 2016 and 2017. And if you looked at 2020 and 2021, obviously significant increases as well. Obviously, we've seen a dip in 2018, B20 rules, and, and potentially forecasted for 2023, we might see a, a decrease in, in prices as well. So from that perspective, if you were a buyer in 2021, a buyer in 2022, you wouldn't want to see your asset decrease in value. But like I said, you know what? That's part of the journey. That's part of what the market looks like. But even though we can potentially see price decreases at certain in certain price points at certain times, in the long term, I would say you're still on an average 
um, historically, last five years, last 10 years, even last 15 years, anywhere closer on 7% year after year increase if we smooth out uh, the last 10, 15 years. Now, like I said, it's not the case every single year, but if you look at the average in the last 5, 10, 15 years, it's around 7% increase year after year. Obviously, what what can you do if you're one of those people that have fortunately and unfortunately because buying a home is more than just the um, the asset value of the property there is a lot of non-financial benefits of owning a home right even on the investment side there's certainly a lot of things the rationale on why you would buy uh, a home as an investment now one strategy in this kind of environment where we seen prices of homes go down. Technically, we've been able to present refinancing options. So refinancing options could basically help um, a homeowner or a mortgage borrower have access to funds. Now, with higher interest rate means higher payments and getting access to uh, liquidity, either funds either just in case funds gives you the ability to to subsidize using those funds you know the shortfall that you may have based on the the, the big big mortgage payment increase now on a refinance level as well we're able to extend amortization up to 30 years by doing that it lowers the mortgage payment now again there's some financing, refinancing options for us to consider. If you are in that kind of scenario, don't think that there's no that, that you don't have any help out there. Now, look at it. Looking at this from a long-term perspective is also crucial because real estate markets do recover; they do grow over time. You know, if you have to, you know, if you're patient with your asset your home or any investments in the long term you're be, you're going to benefit you might see some interest rate relief starting in 2024 as well so it's it's um almost consensus that we probably have reached the peak of where the market where the interest rates are so technically with interest rate relief in 2024 it could positively affect your um, interest rates. So if you're due for renewal or or you have a variable rate or just a matter of you want to consider refi uh, renegotiating your current mortgage with future lower rates, obviously in 2024, 2025, maybe to even 2026, those might be some timelines that we can take a look at and seeing maybe we can renegotiate, renew, refinance your mortgage at that time. So lower rates is a benefit, but lower rates also a benefit for the asset, right? For the property. So it's got an in interest rate that has, has an inverse relationship with prices of the home. So as rates go down, there is a um, an upward pressure for the prices of homes. So that could be a good thing 2024 or later. So a longer term perspective on your investment is is good. Now, one of the things that we also know is that um, there are record immigration numbers to come into Canada and they are going to settle into where the jobs are typically or where the populations are. So that would be the GTA. So that's definitely a positive in our market. So again, between obviously longer term perspective your interest rates and potentially a higher demand for housing through immigration that that will definitely possibly impact your asset values now the main thing here really is if you are in that scenario where you're worried you're thinking you made a mistake really seeking professional guidance is so so important it's more valuable now than ever because talking to an experienced mortgage broker or speaking with your real estate professional expert can provide you with some information, some clarity, some directions on what you need to do moving forward. Now, as we approach the end of 2023, heading into 2024, 
I think it can only get better, right? So the more certainty we have with the interest rates, if you're, you know, a buyer on the sideline waiting, I think now is as good as time as, as a good a time any as any to 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 buy. Now, yes, the interest rates are still high; they have been decreased, but we can plan for the higher interest rates, as I mentioned earlier. We can pick a variable rate that will have the benefit of the rate decreases to happen in the future. We can pick um, a short-term fixed rate so that we can, you know, renegotiate your mortgage rate when rates are lower. But in the short term, we can manage and plan for the interest rates, the mortgage rates, and the payments. But the property is something that you have to keep in mind. Sometimes that opportunity, the buying opportunity, is not there forever, right? So when when you hear uh, a little bit of, you know, uh, apprehension in the market when people when the buyers are not out there and landing uh, lining up for every single properties and all that kind of stuff you should see that as a trigger as a buyer that it's it's a buying opportunity you can put conditions out there you can negotiate prices you can look at multiple properties as different options whether or not it's for your home or to invest in but let me also um, answer some common questions that, that were thrown our way, somewhat relevant to, to what we're talking about right now. Um, why have home prices in the GTA dropped in 2023? As we mentioned earlier, it's the interest rates. It's the economic shifts um, when it comes to, obviously, inflation and, and, and policies that the government are, are putting on from a qualifying perspective. Um, so the uncertainty the interest on the interest rate obviously caused people to hold back because if you don't know how much you're paying tomorrow, if you're you know if you're if you're into a mortgage, um, it's it's not it's not obviously uh, it's not easy to to budget for that. Now it says here, and next one is: Is it a good time to buy a property in the GTA? Absolutely. Now it's a good time to buy when you're. Uh, aware on what's happening with the interest rate, you're educated, you're informed. There, um, it's a good time to buy if this is a long-term investment. If you're looking to flip a property today and, and you have a shorter timeline, that might not be the right strategy to to uh, to have right now. Now, researching and then making sure that you've got your mortgage expert and real estate real estate expert on hand is, as I mentioned earlier, critical because at least you're coming in with informed decisions. And technically, this is the winter, right? So this is the winter of our our um, economic market, not just winter as in winter. It's a, it's a winter in the economic market. Now, there are opportunities during the winter time. There's less buyers, there's less competition, and maybe more motivated sellers so you can negotiate. Another question would be, who's buying in Toronto real estate right now? From our perspective, you know, we've got first-time home buyers that's still trying to get in and and you know try to get um up their home, their first property. So prices, even though it's gone down, it hasn't tanked. So for some first-time home buyers are still obviously you know waiting around and and looking for the right opportunity, right property. So we have some clients that are first-time home buyers, um, upsizing buyers. We have a few of those as well, um, looking at the opportunity to uh, sell first, but sell and buy into you know from a, a townhome to a detach. Uh, certainly, those are you know those clients are are out there. Um, they're also looking at some of the secondary markets, right? So if you're in Toronto, maybe you'll consider Milton, Mississauga, Burlington, Hamilton, maybe even, you know, Guelph and Cambridge and Kitchener and Waterloo a little bit further out or on the north side of Toronto, Barrie, right? So again, there's lots of areas, secondary areas, secondary markets that I think will be in demand and continue to be in demand. Now, there is a shift into you know a lot of these companies and organizations that are employing a lot of a lot of uh, 
um, Canadians uh, into trying to get them into the office, into their sites more and more. But we've seen that there's still, you know, there's still a lot of people working from home. We've seen that uh, even though you're driving a little bit further, if you only have to do it once or twice a week, it's still, it's still manageable and it's not so cumbersome. Now, again, the, the Niagara Falls market may not be as hot as it was before because it's a little bit further out, even if you're coming in once, twice, three times a week. But again, the secondary market, it's something to watch for the upsizers. Multi-property investors. So those are ones where technically sat back, some even sold off. But I think these clients, the savvy investors, are there watching, looking for a deal. I think, you know, as we approach you know, January, February, they're they're gonna be back. They're gonna be looking for the deals, looking for the right opportunity, maybe the multi unit properties like, you know, two, three, four units on a given on a given home, right? So you can you can manage cash flow better that way, even with the higher interest rates. How should recent buyers who purchased at higher prices manage their situation? Again, if they can hold, if you can look at refinancing options to give you some liquidity and extending your amortization to lower the monthly mortgage payment. Those are tactics, um, solutions, uh, strategies that we can take a look at. Um, yes, no one wants to pay their mortgage longer because ultimately, in the long term, uh, prices of home or uh, you know your cost to borrow increases, but a lot of the mortgage um, lenders that we have access to, even though they'll allow us to expand, extend the amortization, there's some privileges that allows us also when rates are lower to increase your payments and stuff. So if the minimum payment decrease when the rates decrease, we can also be a little bit more aggressive and bring back your amortization from 30 years to 25 years, from 25 years to 20 years or so. What are the implications for the rental market in the GTA? Rental prices have also increased because the demand for housing is higher. So, and for the landlords out there, the the uh, the mom and pop investors out there, their interest rate, their cost of borrowing is higher. So, obviously, they they want to be able to sustain. Uh, those mortgage, condo fee, property tax payments. So, the there is an upward pressure on on rentals, um, and and certainly it's not easy to go uh, get into rentals these days in in the GTA. Now, whether or not you're looking at the you know the town town Toronto or GTA, I think both markets are pretty busy or pretty much in demand uh, on the rental side. Thank you so much for listening in. It's um, almost the holidays. I wish everyone a great, great holiday season. I'm around if you have any questions. Um, 416-705-3239 is my number. Have a great, great week.